we're here, ready to do this. I'm really excited. Awesome, it's my first man. time seeing your your place too. It's really nice. It's lovely. Thank you. I appreciate that. Did you walk over here from yours? I did not. I took an Uber because I'm on the other side of town. Okay. Normally, I would take the train if I had a little more time, but I was running a little late, so I hopped in the Uber. Tesla got me right here. Okay. Fantastic. Took the Tesla over. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Where, where are you staying at right now? So I'm in the East Village, right by Tompkins Square Park. Okay. You're pretty East on yes. East Village. Yes. How are you liking it? I love it, man. I've been there for two years now. Um, the apartment itself is, you know, kind of small and unassuming, nothing special about it, but the location's great and it does the trick. I mean, it's me, my girlfriend and her slash our two cats. So it's crowded. It's cramped. Okay. You got a family in there. It's nice. It's so my girlfriend's name is Katya, as you know. Yeah. And she has two cats. So I live with three cats. Awesome. (laughs) Three cats. You're living the dream. The dream, baby. All right, man. Everybody, I'm introducing my friend Matt, the Picasso of our generation. Oh, come on. This guy really makes some cool paintings. He is gifted when it comes to painting. And I'm excited to share his artwork with you and a little bit more about him. Matt, let's just get right to it. Let's talk about the paintings. How did this start? Tell me how it's going. I love that. So it started kind of serendipitously, kind of by coincidence. I mean, I've always been drawn to creative stuff and just I think I've always been as cliche cliche as it sounds, you know, a little different and didn't really love sports as a kid or other things like that. I was more interested in playing music or, you know, painting my face or dressing up in costumes. So I was doing music really steady all through high school, middle school, early college. And then it kind of just spilled over into drawings, which then spilled over into paintings. They kind of all just flowed together. So I had been a bass player in bands and written songs and stuff like that. And then when I went to college, I, you know, had the adjustment of being in a new place and not really knowing too many people. And so I would go and draw in my room and in my dorm room. And then that turned into more drawings. And then when I came home for summer break that year, it was freshman year of college, I just picked up some canvases. I just went to Michael's and said, you know what, it's time to do paintings instead of drawings. And it was great. I mean, that first summer of learning to paint and, well, I shouldn't even say learning because I'm still really learning. You know, I'm a perpetual student, but that first summer of just making paintings and really going crazy and being totally free and not thinking about anything about, oh, are people going to like this? Or, oh, is this going to get into a gallery? But rather just painting and creating for the sake of it. That was, that was the best times. You know, I wish I could go back to that sometimes and channel that energy. But yeah, that's kind of how it started. And that was about five, six years ago at this point. Yeah. And there's been some stylistic changes. There's been some ebbs and flows. And we're still just at the beginning, hopefully. So Yeah, absolutely. I love how you said you're a perpetual learner. Totally. That's a, that's a great way to kind of not a per- Not a perpetual good learner, but a perpetual learner. Hey. I'm not the best student. Hey, man. Takes time sometimes, <laughs> yeah, right? Totally. And, yeah, I've, I've noticed your paintings from the beginning are very different from what you're putting out now totally and i'm actually really surprised to hear that you started only as a freshman in college mm-hmm. so what like wh- i guess drawings it started with drawings because mm-hmm. you were bored in class or something it was the bored in class but also like i guess i was just kind of lonely i mean not like a sad boy depressed kind of thing but i was just kind of lonely and rather than maybe join a fraternity or join a mm-hmm. club or try to go out i just would kind of stay in my room and go through notebooks. And I was also doing a lot of music at the time too. So I was kind of in my college freshman artsy phase that I just guess I didn't really grow out of. It just continued and developed, you know? Right. So yeah, it was started with a lot of weird drawings and I still have a lot of those. My mom kept them. Gotta love moms for stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's good to keep hold on to that. You never know, you know. Exactly. And I'm sure you'll you'll look back on those all the time. Totally. Um, so, was there anyone who like particularly inspired you to like get into from drawing to painting, mm. or was it more just like, I want to take it up a notch? Were you watching YouTube? Like what? Definitely. Um, well, I'm, start with drawing. I feel like it was it was I was inspired maybe by like 
the idea of like the poet slash the visual artist slash maybe the musical artist, people that have, have done that, you know, maybe like the beat generation and stuff like that. Then as it, as the drawings continued and I realized, oh, maybe I want to do paintings as well. I was definitely inspired by some of the common artists that I think people are first inspired by. Jean Michel Basquiat, for sure. Okay. Loved his stuff, loved his whole ethos of kind of just like DIY, anti establishment, but still very much appreciated and lauded within the establishment. I like the idea of that. Keith Herring, how he would do the stuff on the subways and how his stuff was very cartoonish and for, and direct, just kind of concrete imagery yeah, yeah. made quickly. I was inspired by that type of stuff. Just seeing these figures who we now know as very big and uh, prominent, but, you know, when they started or when anybody starts, is we're all the same. I mean, we're all just taking our materials and putting them on canvas or paper or the, whatever it might be. And we're just trying to make something, I guess, that that we feel, you know, it's not even coming from a place of, oh, I hope people like this or it's it's coming from, oh, I just need to maybe let this stuff out. Maybe it's in here and I just need to get it out. So Keith Haring, Basquiat uh, were some of the early influences. Then I remember watching uh, the movie about Jackson Pollock. I mean, he's, you know, none of these people are... are anybody to look up to necessarily. I've learned not to put anybody on a pedestal or think that anybody is better or different because we all have something unique to offer. But yeah. I remember watching the Pollock movie and he was a really probably not a nice guy and a you know kind of a messed up person. But I remember watching that and being inspired to go get my first canvases. Who is that? Pollock? Jackson Pollock. He did okay. like the splatter paint style where... Um, it was very, it was kind of like ushered in the era of like abstract expressionism of like that different style of just not having a concrete message in your painting, but the act of making the painting itself kind of being the message is interesting. Okay. And there was a movie about him um, with some, like uh, some, it was, um, it was not a documentary. It was like with actors and stuff. And I watched that and I was just like, oh, time to get some canvases and just see what the hell happens. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Okay, so you mentioned like the act of the painting mm -hmm. and you mentioned like the cartoonish style of Keith Haring. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we see a lot of cartoonish style in your painting. 100%. Can we talk about like the act of your creative 100%. process? How, how do Absolutely. you typically like, you know, you get the canvas. How do you yeah. bring your idea into life? Totally. Um, well, it depends on the style. Um, and like you said, I, my style now is very cartoonish. It's a lot of these figures that look like they would be in cartoons or video games. It's awesome. They're, they're, thank you yeah. so much. They're very digital. So that's that process is kind of meticulous and requires patience and multiple sessions to finish a piece. I can imagine. So that's why I originally, and still I was doing abstracts too, because that's kind of the opposite. It's, right. it's much more free flowing and you let the paint take a life of its own. Because to go back to what you were saying, how do you, how do you bring your visions to life? The, the short answer is you don't. It's like you're never going to... Your your what you execute is off is never going to be exactly what you envision. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to realize that the paint and the canvas they have a they have a mindset of their own, and you know you're gonna do your thing and they're gonna do theirs. It, it sounds cliche, but it's like a dance, you know, and you're kind of uh -huh. dancing and hopefully you make it work. But that's why I s try to do some abstract stuff too because that's more freeing and I you kind of surrender and you let the paint do its own thing. But for my style of of solitary figures. You know, I have to be a little more meticulous, and, and that can get frustrating. I, I don't even know how certain artists do it who can paint, like, photorealism or these really intricate, elaborate scenes. I don't know how that requires a patience and a skill set that I don't have either. Yeah. But— Well, hey, I mean, you, you definitely have some aspect of it. Some. I mean, these are detailed, <laughs> detailed, pretty detailed drawings, and, you know— Every character definitely has a lot of personality. Can you talk about the characters? Like, are Thank these you people so you much, see, man. Yeah, are these people you see in in real life or I are wish. they yeah. Are they, <laughs> I mean, uh, recently you posted a video and you kind of did a narrative yes. of of this waiter. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. Um Norm. Have you seen someone? Sim His name's Norm? <laughs> That's what I named That's him. That's what you named him? Could have done okay. some other names. He definitely looks like Norm. a Norm. Yeah. We're going to put Norm up on the screen here yes. so everyone can get a good <laughs> visual of Norm. Um, 
is Norm someone you've seen in person, or is that just like so? Norm is not. Idea? He's not somebody specific I've seen. But what I feel about him, and what I feel about a lot of my characters, is that they're people we've all seen. Even um, more broader, like some of the characters I paint are not people we would see in our everyday. It's more of like this cast of outlaws or mystical cr- characters, like pirates and wizards and monkeys staring at skeletons and vampires and monsters and apes and all these weird funky things but then a lot of them are also just people i feel like they're often disgruntled or like you said they just have a lot of personality maybe they're overjoyed or they're or they're frustrated or but whatever they are like i feel like it feels like people we've seen before even though we probably haven't I will, though, sometimes do specific characters. As you know, you've got the, the MF Doom print right over yeah, there. Yeah, right over there. So I'll do some rappers or some rock stars or just yeah. people that I think sort of fit the ethos that I'm trying to go for, which is like yeah. outcast. Kendrick. Sort of Kendrick, exactly. Do it your own way. Take your own I think path. You did Nas too, right? I definitely did Nas. Yeah, Good that's memory. A cool one. Yeah. So I did. I have done a lot of hip hop artists. Um, okay. Uh, that was kind of a, a loose series that I did where I was just because I I've been a lifelong hip hop fan, especially the more yeah. classic stuff. Uh, that that blossomed in me at an early age, a love for just that sort of style of music. So I did a lot of rappers. And then I've also done a decent bit of rockers because I love that genre as well. So I've done Kurt Cobain. I've done the lead singer of the Smashing Pumpkins. I've done John Frusciante from the Chili Peppers. So specific people that fit the ethos that I'm going for. But then it's also just weird, funky characters that we all kind of know and love. A cast of drifters, I guess you would say, or the misanthropes or those on the margins of society. You know, it's not yeah. that deep necessarily, but it's like they all kind of They're fit under that umbrella. Yeah, like they, you know, they all have a certain personality. Thank you, right. homie. Yeah. yeah Appreciate so it. Tell me, Matt, what what are you like goals wise? Like, do you plan on having more galleries, more shows? I mean, I've been to a couple. They, mm-hmm. they seem to go really well. Thank you. And thank you for like, always coming and yeah, supporting, I feel, bro. I feel like you should definitely keep doing that. What are your goals, objectives, like maybe short term, long term? 100%. I wish what I was you? a little more solidified with specifically what I want, but would love to just have the opportunities to get the work out to more people, whether that be in the form of paintings or in the form of, you know, merchandise, t-shirts, like the one you're wearing. Yep. Stefan's repping right now. I am. Or maybe some form of animation, turning it into a cartoon, turning it into something a little more direct to the person viewing it because... Like you said, you know, paintings, they oftentimes have to be seen in a gallery space or Mm -hmm. you have to purchase them and then live with them. I want to make my art very accessible and, you know, so people can interact with it. And and, because because these characters, like like we've been saying, they have a lot of personality. They're fun. I like like the guy I did, Norm. I could do that with other characters. I envision voiceovers. And what I like to say about my paintings, too, is that they're kind of like. Uh, peaks into whole scenes or whole worlds. So I guess one of my goals, short term and long term, would be to build out those worlds, whether it's in the form of claymation, animation, working with somebody to maybe help me. Because because yeah. one thing I do realize is, you know, you can do all that you you want um, alone, but it does take people to help out and collaborate. Because I have a lot of uh, limits, limitations on what I can do as just one person. So I'd love to maybe work with some people to help bring some visions to life. But but on a more small scale too, and on a more tangible scale, I'd love to just keep painting these, make them bigger for sure. Because right now all my paintings are pretty small. Hopefully get into some group shows. I've got to push myself harder in that. I got to put my foot on the gas. Really reach out and network more to make stuff like that happen. But yeah, just keep painting explore and experiment do some different stuff you know i'm not gonna do this one style forever so hopefully just keep experimenting keep growing as an artist dabble in different mediums and things and yeah just just you know any day that i get to paint or make finish a new piece that's that's a blessing so i'll keep it in perspective all while trying to grow and evolve you know that's amazing, man. It's so Thank nice you, to see. It's so nice to see that you enjoy what you're doing, and I'm really excited to see what's next. I love the idea of animations, uh, um, you know, bringing it to life, and 
just you know seeing where you might take it i think you got to really stick with it because you definitely have i love how you yeah. responded to the norm one too i might need you for some voiceovers some voice, some okay. colli- i'm gonna need you okay for that. yeah let me know if you have a character you think my yes. voice works with let's do and, it and plus i've been doing kind of the wine theme now with the butlers okay. yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. so it's a perfect yeah. fit yeah yeah and i saw the butlers are kind of different like one is like a little more snobby one's a little Correct. more like you know you get it man yeah so yeah okay one's yeah, like very happy and willing to be serving whoever he's serving the other's like screw this shit like, yeah, yeah yeah sorry if i did, can't curse no no you can say whatever you I want i was like right so the varying it's it's the varying moods like I, like if you look at all the paintings, you see the human experience. You see yeah. all different emotions and states because we're all like that. Like sometimes you're like, this is great and you want to put on a face or, or genuinely you feel like something's great. Other times you're like, screw this. Like I'm cynical about something. So try yeah. to get it all on the canvas. You awesome, know? man. If you have a script for me, I'd love to. Uh, yes. Yeah, I'd love we'll to make get that yeah, I'm going to keep that in mind now because yeah, I yeah. need other voices and stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Awesome, man. So. That was great. Thanks for sharing all about, you know, your artwork. Um, can you bring up or the next thing I would like to bring up, I guess, is the music. Because yes. I know you're into music. I know that you're working on some music right now. And you mentioned that in high school, that was kind of your thing. Totally. I had heard that you were a rapper. I was a little bit of a can rapper. You, can you tell Still me Still am a little bit yeah. of a rapper. Okay. Not the proudest to admit it, but you know what? It's part hey, of me. No, so, I think that's cool. Can you, yes, can you share more about that? 100%. So I've, like I said, I've loved hip hop from an early age and I've always loved doing different things, dressing up, um, you know, because when I would see rappers or people, whoever that I kind of looked up to, I would always want to try to emulate them. And so my rap career using the term career very loosely, started, I'm trying to think when it really started. I think it kind of started in eighth grade. You know, I had gone through the normal middle school phase of listening to a lot of Eminem, Biggie Smalls, Nas, Jay-Z, all the classics, all the greats. And then eighth grade came around and I was maybe, you know, trying to come out of my shell a little bit more. And Mac Miller had came on the scene and I watched some of his videos and I was like, whoa, like here's this, Jewish kid like seems nice and he's making these dope raps and he's doing it with his friends and it just seemed really organic and I was like all right like I'm just gonna do some stuff so like this was really I wasn't I'm not really a social media guy now but even back then I mean I didn't have Facebook or this is before Instagram this was eighth grade so this was about 10 15 years ago at this point and probably closer to 15 and I remember my my friend had a Facebook and I was just like rapping over some beats and then we took a video of it and then I was just like okay let's put it on your Facebook and then I put some on YouTube like you know this is not part of my past that I'm the most proud of I I I deleted all the videos because I was like well with trying to apply to college in a couple years it might be a conflict of interest it might not look great on the resume right but there were some funny rap videos where I was basically just rapping my versions of of songs like I think I did a Wiz Khalifa song a Mac Miller song maybe a Nas song I forget which beats I used and I this was before when I, people were uptight about like oh copyright and stuff like I was just using the beats and rapping over them and my YouTube name was rapper Matt one but then I had this cool shift to Hans Matic, a playoff of Illmatic. Oh, sick. Because I was like, ooh, that's double because it's a playoff Illmatic, but my name is Matthew Hansman, so Hans Matt. So it's like a reverse of my name. Oh, okay. So I was like, yo, I'm Hans Matic. I don't, I, I probably could remember some specific bars if I tried. None are coming to me off the top <laughs> of my head, but I had like five or six songs and I got a lot of love on them. I also definitely got some hate. Funny hey. enough, funny enough, one of the haters turned out to be a classmate of mine who was pranking me it was like he created a burner youtube account and would like comment like what the fuck are you doing white boy and then like it turned out to be somebody that we went to school so i was like hey man screw you i don't know how i found out i think one day because we were kind of friendly like or he was in my larger circle of friends so i was telling them oh i've got this hate or whatever and i could see him like laughing under his teeth so i was like it It was him i cracked the code Yeah. Yeah, yeah but the rapping was fun and i still you know I still like to freestyle for fun. 
uh, when I'm with my friends, just letting loose. I'll freestyle. Like we have a, a good mutual friend. Him and I used to freestyle sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And so when about, when I, it's I, right, I you know, with him too. exactly. With Tony Flo, we're mentioning yes. Tony Flo. You freestyle with him. I have. Yeah, we've I love definitely that. done that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I had a bit of a rap kind of. Uh, phase as well there was this app called rap chat yes do you know it no i don't it was like it puts on a beat for you and then like you could record it post it and then i like, love you that. follow your friends so. i needed that actually yeah yeah. and we could have had fun. a cypher we could have spit yeah. bars back and forth back in the day back in high school that was definitely a thing for <laughs> me too next podcast i'll let the freestyles loose we can we can yeah we can we can hit a little freestyle. freestyle let's yeah. do that um next thing i want to mention you mentioned queen's rapper like nas I heard that you had a run in with a very legendary Queens rapper. Who? You don't know? Wait. No, I don't. I was told it was at a Whole Foods. Is this a true story? Oh my God. How did I not remember this? Yes. I saw Prodigy a few days. I was working at Whole Foods. I was. I can't believe I didn't remember that. I guess maybe I wasn't thinking that he was from Queens. Although Queensbridge, of course. I should have known that. Yes. So I was working at Whole Foods, cashier. Um, one of my last jobs before I committed to the art stuff full time and he just walked in and it's crazy. Yeah. Where, where is this in Miami. Place? So in Miami? it wasn't even okay, in New okay. York. Um, and yeah, it's like, you'd be surprised. I mean, most people don't know who a guy like that is, you know, it's like, unless right. you're in the really, really tier of like being known. Yeah. Even if you're such a legend in the hip hop world and made some amazing, like he made the infamous, which right. is mob deep, you know, but he's a legend. People in, weren't in rap. He's a legend. Exactly. Definitely. Exactly. Yeah, it's unquestionable. But in the world, he kind of just operates like anybody, like nobody was really approaching him or anything. I don't think. Yeah. And I went yeah, up yeah, to yeah. him Makes and I sense. told him I was a big fan and stuff. How did, how and did he react? He was super positive. I mean, I don't yeah. even, the whole our interaction was probably only five, 10 seconds, uh -huh. but I would use it actually in some of my, I guess Tony told you about this because I, <laughs> I would say it in freestyle. It's like, I saw Prodigy a few days before he died. And it's like, and then that, that was like a sign that like I was meant to do something different, you know, just something kind of stupid and cliche yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. But anyways, it was really cool meeting him and just being able to tell him that I was a fan because he did end up passing just a few days after I met him. So crazy. Rest, yeah. rest in peace to Prodigy. Yeah, rest For in anyone peace. anyone who's watching this might be interested, Prodigy is part of Mob Deep pretty legendary rap group and his influence is huge mm -hmm. futures most recent album um we don't trust you mm -hmm. not the not the recent one but the first version Got with you. metro boomin is actually mostly dedicated to prodigy there's really? a lot yeah there's seen it all is uh a sample of a mob deep beat oh dope. the song seen it all on futures album and so is there's one part in the album where it's just like Prodigy speaking, mm. talking about like being a rapper and stuff. Super so, cool. I, I, I should learn a more about him. Prodigy's a major influence. Yeah, he's major unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. One of the best. Um, and I heard also you're a Strokes fan. Big Strokes fan. Yeah. Big and time Strokes fan. You had a link up with a producer of theirs? or Yes. Yeah. Well, not a link up, but... Um, what was the interaction there? So just via Instagram, but... And this okay. is cool because it circles back to something we were going to talk about, which is that I have been doing some music lately right? and been focusing a little more on that as in addition to painting because they kind of flow into each other. And so I made some demos and I sent them to Gordon Raphael, who is the producer of the first two Strokes albums and a big part of shaping their kind of iconic, gritty raw sound and so yeah i've loved the strokes for a while i think they were one of the first bands i discovered when i picked up the bass guitar early on in high school and their whole kind of just like aesthetic and devil may care attitude was just really cool to me and it really resonated and i've heard it said before it's just like they really look like rock stars and i know that stuff can get cliche and it's much more than the image that's important, but for whatever reason, they've always just been like really cool to me, and I've just loved their tunes. I love their aesthetic. I love everything about them. And so when I was making some demos, I sent them to Gordon Raphael because I could see that he's a very approachable, kind guy. Over Instagram? Over Instagram, oh, just on DM. Cool. And he responded really positively. And That's so nice. This was a couple months ago. Now I'm much further along in the process. I have much more polished uh, works. 
I should probably send them over. But he's focusing on his own stuff. I mean, what did he I, say to you? He was like, wow, these are really great. Like, it was a very nice compliment that you could tell wasn't like. It was genuine. Yeah, it was genuine. Exactly. He was like, these are really great, very compelling guitar work, very organic lyrics, like um, just really nice and encouraging. And stuff like that goes such a long way. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know. It's like when people just kind of cheer you on and you can tell it comes from a place of sincerity. It just, and especially when it's people that you respect. Yeah. I mean, it's nice. That's a pretty, you know, successful person. Totally. Yeah. For you, for him to appreciate your work, that must feel good. Yeah. A hundred percent. What, what is your plan with your music right now? I know that's been something that you've been doing a lot. For sure. So the music is going along well. Um, the plan now is we're in the kind of finishing stages. I mean, I have to figure it out because mm -hmm. I have like 11, I have like an 11 song project right now. That's pretty much oh, recorded. Wow. Okay. And so it's like full songs. It's 11 songs. It's 41 minutes. But the thing is, is like, I don't want to just release it and have it just have dead air in the sense that like, I, I haven't cultivated an audience for music. I mean, I haven't, it's kind of just coming out of nowhere, this music stuff, yeah. or at least that's the perception of it. I mean, I have been making music for a long Longer time than you've been painting for sure. Exactly. Yeah. But, but your audience is knows you for the pain. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm not known for anything, but it's like, you're, you're known though. You, shut you, up. You got, you're, you have like, you're too you have, kind. Uh, I mean, you, you got a few, how many thousand followers? You have like, like four, four, but yeah. I mean, that's, that's someday more someday yeah, we'll all definitely. be on top of that mountain, but yeah. you know, it's the years of struggle that are the most fruitful in the long run. That's Sigmund Freud quote. I think, okay. He's like one day the years of struggle will strike you as the most beautiful. And it, and You'll I've learned on that. I, first of all, I've learned that my struggle is not actually a real struggle. There are people that have real struggles. Me trying to make it as a creative is not a real struggle, but I've learned to enjoy the quote unquote struggle, you know, the years of obscurity or what feels like rejection. But anyways, to go back to the music stuff, yeah. you know, I got to figure out how to release it because I have some friends who do music and they've all told me you want to, before you, re when you start releasing, it has to just be songs because if you release a whole project with no following, it's just going to go to dead air. Um, mm -hmm. So, I'll, but I'll figure it out. I'll navigate yeah. it. What I think I'll do is I'm going to start releasing a couple of songs and then I'm going to release them all on on the whole project. Still got to think of a stage name, though. Still got to do album art. But hopefully, right now it's June. Hopefully before the end of, of the summer, for sure, we're going to have some stuff out. Okay. And I met this cool engineer through through Tony, through our mutual friend. And he's re really affordable. Are you talking about Mike? I'm not talking about Mike. Okay. Mike is dope. But I'm yeah. talking about Mike's good friend, Nathan. Um, you maybe have met him. Maybe. maybe He was there last week at, at Tony's release. But anyways, really great guy, super talented, been able to really foster a nice collaborative relationship with him where we're just recording really quickly and organically. Oftentimes it's first takes and we work really efficiently and it captures that sort of raw energy in the music that I like. So I'm trying to do that. Just What style of music is it? It's rock and roll, okay, for cool. sure. It's kind of like alternative rock. It's got a little psychedelic, got a little bit of almost like southern rock, southwest influences. In I am singing. Okay. And my voice is far from perfect, but that kind of is what gives it the uh, emotion and what makes it a little more authentic and different, you know? Okay. Like I played it for a friend and he was like, well, I sent it to him and he was like, what I didn't like about it at first ended up being what I liked about it when I listened to it a second time, which yeah. is just that it's a little bit more human and DIY sounding, you know? Yeah. While still being very meticulous and intentional, you know, it's interesting. It's, it's been a really fun process because I've played music all these years and took it seriously, but never really took the next step of, oh, I want to record something and put it out, you know? So it's been nice doing that now. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed just to be able to go to this little studio space that he has and, you know, it's far from fancy or, you know, the most elaborate studio, but we get the job done. Yeah. You and know? you're doing what you love, so. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate you asking about it, bro. Let yeah. me talk a little bit about it. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah. I, I'm curious and I'm, I'm glad I know more about it now. Um, before we head out of here, this is the Better Road podcast. Yes. So I always like to ask, is there something part of your daily routine or something that you do, you know, just on the regular maybe mm -hmm. that improves the quality of your life or gets you better, improves you as an individual? Great question. Can you share? Well, 
first of all, there I should be doing more things like that, things that better my quality of life and better me as an artist and individual. I should, you know, something you do, which I really admire, is you're, you're health conscious, you cook. You know, I need to do more things like that. But some of the things that I try to do, really, I mean, it's simple, but it's practice gratitude. Just always recognize, because it can be easy. I, I tend to lean into cynicism and... Um, you know, I look and see what other people are doing. Oh, they're doing better than me, you know, but, but it's more important to be grateful and practice gratitude. And I think that propels you into a mode where you can conquer your goals. You can get stuff done because you're coming from a mindset of, you know, how blessed am I just to be able to make a painting, make a song, whatever it might be. So try to practice gratitude, try to stay hydrated um, walk a lot. One of the perks of living in New York is, you know, it's such a walkable city. So I really try to walk everywhere. And, and that is twofold because on the one hand you get outside, you get sunlight, you get your steps in, but it's always just, it's free inspiration. I mean, I know that sounds cliche too, but just walking around, I see so many characters, people that inspire my paintings, inspire songwriting and, keep me grounded and it's just it's been great being here it's been a great experience um exposing myself to some of what this city has to offer you know and yeah. putting that into my work we're glad to have you out here gratitude that's a big one gratitude is the attitude i love that gratitude is the <laughs> attitude that's definitely something to take take home with you now if anyone's looking to connect with you via social mm -hmm. media or any other way you suggest, like maybe they want to check out your music, what's, totally. what's the best way to do that? So social media on Instagram, I am Matthew H. Paintings. Um, you can find me on there. I'm posting my works, posting process stuff. I have a website, which is www.matthandsmanart.com, which is a great place for people to see my paintings. You can read a little bit more about me, purchase works directly. Um, but I'm always really trying to... I would love to be uh, speak with anybody who's trying to see my work or maybe purchase my work. So always feel free to DM me on Instagram. And I'm also on TikTok. I think it's just my name, Matthew Hansman. Uh, so TikTok, Instagram, my website. And then, yeah, music is coming soon. And that'll be on Spotify and YouTube and Apple Music, anywhere you get your music. Nothing's out just yet. But Instagram is a great place to connect with me and... Definitely don't hesitate to say hi and share a word. I'm always responsive and love to engage with people. I'm always just appreciative of anybody that comes my way. So, yeah. Awesome. We're going to link those all in the video and description. Appreciate it, my friend. Yes, my friend. One more thing before we go. Yes. If you might suggest one other person come on this show, anyone in mind? Great question. Okay, I want to think because there's so many. Um there's a lot of people I know who are really doing their thing and taking the alternative path. Let me let me think. Um, try and think of somebody that you know well too. Um, well, Anthony's friend, who you mentioned, Mike, is a total character who's yeah. really taken the better road and his own path as a sound engineer, and he would have countless stories to tell you. He would be yeah. great, Mike. Okay. Then I also have a friend named Blake Goldman, who maybe you've met, maybe you haven't. He is a music manager, so he's in that whole world of managing artists and going on tour with them and their experiences, so he's very interesting. Let me try to give you one more, too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see your one and give you three. Mike, Blake, and you already got Josh. Um, let me think. Maybe it's just that, too, for today. Um, yeah, you know what? Those are, those are two good ones. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We'll those take it. Two is better ones. than one, right? Exactly. Mike and Blake, I would love to have you on this show for everybody watching. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos. Thank you for having me, bro. Thanks, bro. Pleasure. Peace.